The sinking of the Titanic left them alone in the world, or so everyone thought. The so-called Titanic orphans actually had a mother who managed to find them after the ship sank. Here's how. As Leonardo DiCaprio fans know all too well, the tragedy of the Titanic was a tale of terrible class inequality. First-class passengers had a much higher chance of getting a spot on the lifeboats than second- and third-class passengers. Most of the people who died in the Atlantic's icy waters on April 15, 1912 were third-class travelers. More than three-quarters of the 709 third-class passengers died, while 58% of second-class passengers and just 39% of first-class passengers perished. You can't keep us locked in here like animals! The ship's bloody sinking! Two second-class survivors became media sensations because of their unusual backstory. They were two and four years old and had lost their father in the disaster. Their father had kidnapped them from their mother and registered them under false identities when they boarded the ship. They were listed as Louis and Lola, but the press called them the Titanic orphans since they were the only children who survived without a parent or guardian. The authorities had to figure out who they were and whether they had any surviving family. Their father, Michel Navratil, was a Slovakian tailor who lived in Nice, France. He decided to take his two young boys, Michel Jr. and Edmund, to America without telling his estranged wife, Marcel, who had custody but had let them visit him over Easter. He and the boys were sleeping when the ship struck an iceberg near Newfoundland. According to the 2019 documentary, Titanic, Stories from the Deep, Michel Jr. recalled years later in a letter, I was woken up by my father. He carried me in his arms to the deck of the Titanic. My brother and I were put in a boat that was already almost full of passengers. It was the last lifeboat to escape. A 19-year-old first-class passenger, Margaret Hayes, wrapped her dog in her cloak and heard someone yelling as the boat was being lowered, as reported in a 1912 article in the Daybook. A man called out and handed his two children to a sailor. Michelle Jr. wrote, My father charged me to give my mother his affection, and he left us. Hayes took care of the children. When they were rescued by the Carpathia, the authorities struggled to identify them. The two young survivors spoke only French and answered we oui to everything they were asked. Michelle Jr. and Edmund stayed with Hayes in Manhattan while the authorities searched for anyone who might know them. Meanwhile, in France, Marcel Navratil saw their photo in the paper and was overjoyed. They weren't Louis and Lola, but Michelle and Edmund, her boys who had been taken from her by their father. Marcel went to New York, confirmed that she was the boy's mother, and took them back home to France on the ship Oceanic. According to the Daybook, she told reporters, I am the happiest mother in the world. Hayes kissed them goodbye, and both boys grew to adulthood. Edmund was an architect who joined the French resistance during World War II and became a Nazi prisoner of war. He died in his 40s in 1953 after his health suffered during his imprisonment. Michel Jr. was a professor of philosophy at Montpellier University. He visited the U.S. for the Titanic 75th anniversary and a few years later saw his father's grave in Canada for the first time. His father's body had been recovered and buried in Halifax. Michel Jr. died in 2001 at age 92. According to the nonprofit Encyclopedia Titanica, he once said in an interview, There were vast differences of people's wealth on the ship. And I realized later that if we hadn't been in second class, we'd have died. The people who came out alive often cheated and were aggressive. The honest didn't stand a chance.